<clears throat> Good morning, welcome to Namaste Lake Japala for the Light Circle on Lesson 72. Holding grievances is an attack on God's plan for salvation. These and all the lessons that are we do in the light of truth with Jesus to hear where our denials of the lesson are will be posted on YouTube. So in these sessions, we focus on the light of truth, the light of divine nature that we are. And within that light, we go into our hearts in silence and ask Jesus to tell us where our denials are. And as these denials rise up, we just listen in our heart, Jesus, do I have that denial? And then he will tell us, and we can give that immediately over in the light of truth. <coughs> And the beauty of these sessions is as we go through grievances and release grievances or a desire to, and it's a desired experience to experience something other than God. As these are cleared from the mind and there's just a deepening sense of peace in these sessions and really resting as that peace we see our divine nature is revealed. So as we move through the sessions, we just indicate with a little signal when we're complete so that we can move on to the next. We give everyone time to feel with Jesus and listen to the voice for God within. Holding grievances is an attack on God's plan for salvation. Jesus, is there any desire in the subconscious mind to hold grievances as an attack on God's plan for salvation. I'm willing to see that differently. Jesus, are there any desires to hold grievances or hold, really with grievances or withholding love for myself, is there any, I, any desire in the, in the subconscious mind to withhold grievances or hold grievances against myself over a timeline? I'm willing to see that differently. While we have recognized that the ego's plan for salvation is the opposite of God's, we have not yet emphasized that it is an act of attack on his plan. Jesus, is there a desire to hold on to grievances to deny God's plan for salvation? I'm willing to see that differently. It is an active attack on his plan and a deliberate attempt to destroy God's plan for salvation. Jesus, is there a desire in the subconscious mind to attempt to deliberately attempt to destroy God's plan for salvation? Is that a desired experience? I'm willing to see that. In the attack, God is assigned attributes which are actually associated with the ego. 
Jesus, is there a desire in the subconscious mind to assign to God attributes which are actually associated with the ego? I'm willing to see that. Is there a desire for experience in the subconscious mind to experience God as having the attributes of the ego, hatred, anger, vengeance? I'm willing to see that differently. Mm -hmm. Which are actually associated with the ego while the ego appears to take on the attributes of God. The ego's fundamental wish is to replace God. Jesus, is it a desired experience in the subconscious mind to replace God, to attempt to replace God by, with this creation of an ego. Can you show me the desire I'm willing to give that over? The wish to replace God. In fact, the ego is the physical embodiment of that wish. Jesus, I'm willing to see this directly, that the ego is the physical embodiment of that wish to replace God. I'm willing to see that. For it is that wish that seems to be surround, to surround the mind with the body, keeping it separate and alone and unable to reach other minds except through the body that was made to imprison it. Jesus, is there a desire to have an experience of surrounding the mind with the body, keeping it separate and alone? I'm willing to see that differently. I'm willing to give over that desire to you. And unable to reach other mind except to the body that was made to imprison it. Jesus, is there a desire in the subconscious mind not to, to have an experience of not being able to reach others, seemingly, other minds, except through the body made as in prison, a prison? I'm willing to see that differently. The limit on communication cannot be the best means to expand communication. <laughs> Jesus, is there a desire in the subconscious mind to limit communication through a body? Limit communication with the creator through a body. I'm willing to see that differently. Yet the ego would have you believe that it is. Jesus, if there's any residual belief in the subconscious mind that limitation to a body is the best means to expand communication, I would like to see that. I'm willing to see that's not true, that it's possible. That communication does not come from the body. I'm willing to see that. I'm actually willing to see that a body is a means to attempt to deny communication. Mm -hmm. 
on the one just. Although the attempt to keep the limitations that a body would impose is obvious here, it is perhaps not so apparent why holding grievances is an attack on God's plan for salvation. It is perhaps not so apparent why holding grievances is an attack on plan, God's plan for salvation. Jesus, I'm willing for you to show in the heart directly in my direct experience how holding grievances and an attack on God's plan for salvation, an attack on myself. I'm willing to see that. <clears throat> I'm willing to see that attack is impossible on the Son of God. I'm willing to see that. But let us consider the kinds of things you are apt to hold grievances for. for. Are they not always associated with something a body does? Jesus, is there any desire to experience a grievance through something the body does? I'm willing to see that in my life. A person says something you do not like. Jesus, is there any desire to withhold love for myself when someone says something I do not like? I'm willing to see that different. He does something that displeases you. Jesus, is there any desire in the subconscious mind to have an experience of feeling displeased if someone, it seems that someone outside myself does something that I don't like? I'm willing to see that differently. Jesus, is it possible in the light of divine being, the light of who I am in truth, for anyone to do anything seemingly in form that can displease me? I'm willing to see that's my own thought creation, miscreation. He does something that displeases you. He betrays, quote, unquote, his hostile thoughts in his behavior. Jesus, is, it, is there a desire in the subconscious mind to experience that someone else can betray me through host, hostile thoughts in his behavior? I'm willing to look at that directly, that, that desire. You are not dealing here with what the person is. On the contrary, you are exclusively concerned with what he does in a body. You are doing more than failing to help in freeing him from the body's limitations. You are act actively trying to hold him to it by confusing the body, it, the body, with him, judging them as one. Jesus, is there a desire to have an experience to judge behavior in a body, what a body does is one, to confuse what's happening in form in a body.
Jesus, is there a desire in the subconscious mind to impose a limitation on myself through what I believe another body is doing? Herein is God attacked, for if his son is only a body, so must be he as well. Jesus, is there a desire in the subconscious mind for me to hold myself hostage to the belief that another being is a body? I'm willing to see that differently. Jesus, is there a desire to have an experience of attacking God, seeming to attack God through attacking my brother? I'm willing to see that differently. I'm willing to see that an attack on my brother is an attempt to attack God's plan for salvation. I'm willing to see that an attack on my brother is an attack on myself. An attack on myself is an attempt to attack God's plan for salvation. God's plan to see that I already am saved. I'm willing to see this now. If God is a body, what must his plan for salvation be? What could it be with death? In trying to present himself as the author of life and not of death, he is a liar and a deceiver, full of false promising and offering illusions in place of truth. The body's apparent reality makes this view of God quite convincing. In fact, if the body were real, it would be difficult indeed to escape this conclusion. Jesus, is there a desire in the subconscious mind to experience the body as real in order to deny God's plan for salvation? I'm willing to see that differently. Every grievance that you hold insists that the body is real. Jesus, is there a desire in the subconscious mind to insist the body is real through grievances? I'm willing to see that. It overlooks entirely what your brother is. It reinforces your belief that he is the body, 
and condemns him for it. Jesus, is there a desire in the subconscious mind to have an experience where my brother is a body and condemn him for this? I'm willing to see this differently. And it asserts that his salvation must be death, projecting this attack onto God and holding him responsible for it. Jesus, is there a desire to project this attack onto my brother and God and holding God for responsible for attack? I'm willing to see that differently. To this carefully prepared arena, where angry animals seek for prey and mercy cannot enter, the ego comes to save you. God made you a body very well. Let us accept this and be glad. As a body, do not let yourself be deprived of what the body offers. Take the little that you can get. God gave you nothing. Jesus, is there a desire in the subconscious mind to have an experience that God gave me nothing? I want to see this. The body is your only savior. Jesus, I'm willing to see that the body, there is no salvation in the body. I'm willing to see this. It is the death of God in your salvation. Jesus, I feel willing to see that an investment in grievances is an investment of death. An experience of death. I also feel willing to see that as many grievances as miscreations that might be seemingly created that nothing can change the truth of who I am as you made me. I'm willing to see that. This is the universal belief of the world you see. Some hate the body and try to hurt and humiliate it. Jesus, is there any desire in the subconscious mind to have an experience of hurting and humiliating the body? I'm willing to release that. Others love the body and try to glorify and exalt it. Jesus, is there any desire in the subconscious mind for an experience of glorifying and exalting the body? And I'm willing to see that differently. I'm willing to see that's actually agreement. But while the body stands at the center of your concept of yourself, you are attacking God's plan for salvation and holding your grievances against him and his creation, that you may not hear the voice of truth and welcome it as friend. Jesus, is there any desire in the subconscious mind for an experience of holding grievances 
to deny that I can hear the voice for truth and to welcome it as a friend. Is there any desire for that? I release that. Your chosen savior takes his place instead. It is your friend. He is your enemy. Jesus, I would like to release any desire to have the body as a chosen savior to take God's place. We will try today to stop these senseless attacks on salvation. We will try to welcome it instead. Your upside down perception has been ruinous to your peace of mind. Jesus, I'm willing to see how upside down perception is ruinous to peace of mind. It's a decision that is a denial to deny this. I'm willing to see that. You have seen yourself in a body and the truth outside you locked away from your awareness by the body's limitations. Now we're going to try to see this differently. The light of truth is in us where it was placed with, by God. It is the body that is outside us and is not our concern. To be without a body is to be in our natural state to recognize the light of truth in us is to recognize ourselves as we are. To see ourself as separate from the body, S, self with a capital S, is to end the attack on God's plan for salvation and to accept it instead. Wherever his plan is accepted, it is accomplished already. Jesus, in the light of divine being that I know that I am, that you've shown me, and the power I have to recognize the truth. I'm willing to see that I accept the plan and see that it's already accomplished. Our goal in the longer practice periods today is to become aware that God's plan for salvation has already been accomplished in us. To achieve this goal, we must replace attack with acceptance. As long as we attack it, we cannot understand what God's plan for us is. We are therefore attacking what we do not recognize. Now we're going to try to lay judgment aside and ask what God's plan is for us. What is salvation, Father? I do not know. Tell me that I may understand. It feels helpful to pause a minute in the light of divine nature that we are we recognize in this light circle. Pause a minute of silence and have the Father tell us what salvation is. Then we will wait in quiet for his answer. We have attacked God's plan for salvation without waiting to hear what it is. We have shouted our grievances so loudly that we have not listened to his voice. We have used our grievances to close our eyes and stop our ears. Now we would see and hear and learn what is salvation, Father. Ask and you will be answered. Seek and you will find. We are no longer asking the ego what salvation is and where to find it. We are asking it of truth, of the light we are within, divine, infinite being. Be certain then that the answer will be true because of whom you ask. 
Whenever you feel your confidence wane and your hope of success flicker and go out, repeat your question and your request, remembering that you are asking of the infinite creator of infinity. Who created you like himself? What is salvation, Father? I do not know. Tell me that I may understand. He will answer. Be determined to hear. One or perhaps two shorter practice periods an hour will be enough for today, since they will be somewhat longer than usual. These exercises should begin with this. Holding grievance is an attack on God's plan for salvation. Let me accept it instead. What is salvation, Father? Then wait a minute or so in silence, preferably with your eyes closed, and listen for his answer. Thank you for joining us with the session today. We'll sit in silence and listen to the Father's plan for salvation in our hearts. <laughs> 